I'm Preston Spratt with Sprattronics Learning Lab. And just a few days ago, we posted a video on how to geo-unlock your DJI drone. Now, right after we posted that video, DJI lifted their geofencing across the United States of America. They did this to be more in line with the FAA maps and ultimately to absolve themselves of any wrongdoing if you happen to be flying in the wrong area. Now, what does this mean for DJI drone flyers? It pretty much means you can take off and fly as high as you want anywhere and then face the consequences of doing so. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what the change looks like. We're gonna talk about ways to make sure you're still flying compliantly. And finally, we're gonna look at some people that have gotten in trouble for violating the FAA rules and flying where they're not supposed to fly or flying way too high. Let's do this. So up until this week, the DJI Fly map was layered with lots of different flight zones. There were authorization zones, which you had to get permission or geo-unlock with a verified account in order to fly in those areas. There were restricted zones, which would completely stop your aircraft from taking off. There were altitude zones, which would limit how high up your drone could fly. And this may not align with the FAA approved ceilings. You also had enhanced warning zones, so that was just a warning and you would have to say, I assume full liability for flying here. There were also just regular warning zones, which just gave you a warning about something you should be on the lookout for in that area. With the change, there's only two zones now. There's enhanced warning zones and warning zones. And all those do is they're gonna tell you that you're flying and you assume full liability, but you're still gonna be able to take off and fly your drone really without an altitude limit imposed by the DJI Fly app. The way this played out in the real world at our local park, we fell under four different DJI zones and then also had the LAANC zone up to 400 feet. So we had to apply for a link to even fly in the area. Our DJI zones were an authorization zone so we had to geo unlock the area. There was an altitude ceiling, so our drone could only fly to 196 feet or 60 meters unless we geo unlocked it. And then the FAA said we could fly up to 400 feet in that zone. We were in an enhanced warning zone as well as a warning zone. So when we would go to fly, we'd get lots of warnings, but ultimately we were cleared to fly anytime we went out there to take off. And that was just for a simple flight at a nearby park. With DJI removing all of those restricted zones and only going to enhanced warning zones and warning zones, you're now free to take off anywhere, but all the responsibility will come down to the pilot. Let's update your DJI Fly database so that you have access to these new maps and won't ever run into the issue of being grounded because the DJI Fly app thinks you're in a restricted zone. Hopefully, you just have new fly safe data is available right on your home screen and you can press download. But if you don't have that option, there's an easy way to update this firmware or update the maps. We're gonna go down to the very bottom of the screen and click on profile. From there, we're gonna click on settings. And then finally, we'll check for FlySafe database updates. Make sure you're connected to your Wi-Fi or to your hotspot and you'll get the chance to update it. It'll download pretty quickly and then you'll have these new maps that are just warning zones and enhanced warning zones. With the freedom to fly anywhere, you're gonna wanna make sure you check the FAA airspace before you fly. So we recommend the Autopilot app. You can get that on iOS or Android. It's called Autopilot or the desktop version or the website is autopilot.io. And let's jump over here to Denver and we can see that the airport is blocked off. There's some flights areas around Denver. I'm gonna to go to an old neighborhood of ours and I zoom in and I see if we had a drone and still lived in this neighborhood. It looks like we might be able to fly up to 100 feet. We can click in any of these areas and it'll pop up and tell us what the airspace is, who controls it. And I see that this one has Link Auto Approval inactive. That means we're gonna to have to actually contact the FAA 
or the local authority, which in this case should be the Buckley Air Force Base, in order to get approval to fly. But if we jump up to the Green Valley area of Denver, we can find a spot in this neighborhood that'll let us fly up to 400 feet. We simply click on it. We see that we can fly with link approval and we have instant approval activated. We'll set the height of our flight and then we can submit it and we'll get approval to fly in this area from the FAA. If you're not in one of these link approval necessary zones, it'll just say clear to fly, open airspace or green airspace. There's nothing else you need to do and you'll know you're within compliance. Now that we know how to unlock our maps where we can take off anywhere, let's take a look at five great ways to get arrested or get in trouble with the FAA while flying our drone. Number one, flying in restricted airspace. If you can take off anywhere now, there's a decent chance that you may accidentally fly in restricted airspace. Just because DJI won't stop you doesn't mean you can ignore airspace restrictions. Flying near airports, military bases, or in prohibited zones without prior FAA authorization can result in hefty fines. These two fellows are big fans of abandoned buildings. They decided to fly their drone around an abandoned building. It just happened to be right next to Boston's Logan Airport and it landed them in court and arrested. Number two, flying without the correct certification. If you're flying recreationally, you need to pass the trust test. For commercial use, you have to hold a Part 107 remote pilot certificate. Operating without the appropriate credentials can lead to penalties. Third, flying over people. FAA rules prohibit flying drones directly over people unless specific waivers or safety conditions are met. This is especially important in populated areas and during events. Lots of people have gotten in trouble flying their drones over stadiums and over concerts in the past year. Four, not yielding demand aircraft. This is what's gonna get you probably in the most trouble. If a hospital helicopter comes flying by or a low flying aircraft, it's the drone responsibility to get out of the way. This is why the ceiling is 400 feet, but planes can come in lower or need to make an emergency landing. We had a hospital helicopter land right across the street from us on our soccer field. Here's an example of a drone that was out in the California wildfires and came in contact with the super scooper. It left quite a bit of damage on that aircraft and grounded it for nearly a week, which prevented them from being able to fight fires out in California. Five, flying above 400 feet. Your maximum altitude in the USA is 400 feet above ground level, AGL. Yes, there are some exceptions like over tall buildings, but 400 feet is a safe bet. Exceeding this limit can interfere with manned aviation and result in fines or other legal action. The way this typically happens is people set the return to home height pretty high, and then all of a sudden they lose contact with their drone when they're in a new area with maybe a lower ceiling and the drone goes up to that height you previously set. So I might fly in a 200 foot zone near my house, but here at my local park, I have a 400 foot zone. So my return to home height is 396 feet. If I'm in a new zone and I lose contact with my drone and it starts returning to home automatically, it's gonna go back to up to that 396 feet, putting me in violation of the ceiling for the zone I'm flying in. So the removal of DJI's geofencing represents a shift in responsibility from DJI, the drone manufacturer, to the pilot. There don't seem to be as many scenarios where you could blame somebody else for your own negligence or ignorance. Follow the rules, respect the airspace, and ensure your flights are safe and legal and trouble-free, and just make it a great hobby for everybody and for yourself. Thank you.